journey through the compound through one of six entrances, we're greeted by a gang of up to 12 auto turrets. Half of them are placed in housings like this, preventing raiders from breaching the compound once they've blown in. Through to the next area, we have a whole host of quick loot storage, with another six turrets watching over the boxes. Here you'll find three entrances to the compound and three jump ups to the inner peaks. Entering the core through the armoured door, we have enough space for two large loot rooms, a mixing room, furnaces and bags for your whole team. The next floor is home to a vast amount of storage and even two large batteries. Jumping up here, you'll find the entrances to the inner peaks and the open core. The peaks feature six separate chutes for access to the next floor up or back down to the ground floor. Running back in, enter the open core through the defendable area. The open core features three unlootable loot rooms, three multi-TC bunkers, and central vending machine storage. All loot rooms are protected by three walls, guarded by nine auto turrets and overlooked by windows for killing intruders. To open the bunkers, simply place a triangle roof like so. This will allow you to access the storage inside, consisting of five large boxes, a vending machine, and even a large battery. Close the bunker, destroy the twig. The next floor is home to a 360 degree central roof pickup, so you can defend your base easily from the top down. There are even six bedrooms, allowing you to respawn quickly in such case. There are three more roof peaks up like this giving you extra angles to shoot from. The shooting floor consists of a mixture of wide gap peak downs and ramps. These give you excellent visibility of the entire parameter, ensuring no one can enter a breach. Moving onto the roof through one of three exits, you'll find an expansive shooting area room for as many turrets as you can afford, and even bedrooms for a quick respawn. Here you can see the build costs and upkeep of the base. You can fit over a day of materials in the core and up to two days in each external due to the multi-TC footprint. Before you fall off your gaming chair, this build is intended for large groups of 12 or more players, but if you're a solo, feel free to stick around, you might learn something new. Designing this base was no simple task. I experimented with countless different footprints before I decided on this one. This is not your average 3x3 design, so I highly recommend practicing on a build server with your team before trying it for real. You can check out the completed build on rusticated sandbox servers where all my bases have published. If you have any questions, you can join my Discord in the description. First, place on your basic circle base footprint. This will be your starter. For this build, you're going to be using final grade materials throughout, unless otherwise stated. Place down a door on one of the triangles. For now, your TC can go here but I recommend moving it as you expand the base. 
when sealing in the roof, leave a gap for the jump up to the next floor. As you can see, I've speeded up this part of the video. I've done this to make the video as short as possible and prevent it from being repetitive and boring. But don't worry, I'll slow down the tricky parts and explain them as best as I can. When finished, your core should look like this. Use the mixing table room for extra storage early game. As soon as you can, build an airlock on the roof and then seal in the next floor. The twig floor here will help you place the back wall. I'm using metal frames for garage doors, as it's important for stability the higher we go. Again, leave a gap on the opposite side for a jump up. When finished, the floor should look like this, with four lit rooms and space for large batteries or even your TC. Then, add new entrance on the roof, putting garage doors on either side. Add a half wall and a window here. They could be rotated when you upgrade them from stone to metal later. For the multi TC, place triangles all around like this. From each triangle, build up by four squares and delete the first three. From the square, build back with five triangles. Remove the first four triangles and the square. From this foundation, build up by four squares and one more triangle. Apart from the triangle, remove all the foundations. Then, build back towards the base with a pattern of 11 triangles, like so. Upgrade the last one, then delete the rest. There are simpler ways to build multi-TC, but we do this to give you building priv so you can easily destroy the twig foundations. Complete the footprint like so. Building the multi-TC at an angle offset from the base allows us to place this square. Do this six more times and you should have this footprint. Now we need external TCs. To do this, build twig foundations like so. then build out by three squares. Upgrade the last one, which will become our gatehouse. Then, build out by a half moon of triangles and one square. Now for the disconnectable TC. Place down two triangles, upgrading the first one to metal. The two half walls here are very important for the disconnecting design. 
Always remember to lock your TCs. I'm using reinforced windows here to make it a rocket raid. But if you've only got strength and glass at the moment, that's okay. Now to connect the TC to the gatehouse. Remove these foundations and then place a wall frame on the gatehouse. Connect them together using a combination of square and triangle frames. If your main TC gets destroyed, you can only place a new one if you disconnect the externals like so. We can connect it back again by removing the roof and replacing the triangle frames. I have to say thanks to Mini Satori for sharing this cool mechanic. Build wall frames all around the gatehouse. This will help with stability when connecting it to the multi-TC part of the base. So we can finish the compound quicker and get those large furnaces down. Complete the gatehouse like so. Place a half wall to connect to the multi TC and then low walls either side to prevent grubs. Remove all these foundations apart from the last one, build another one next to it, and then place four full walls. For stability, place a temporary twig wall frame here and then a half wall on top. Then build a triangle frame either side. Before connecting them together, build the foundations for the wide gap shooting floor, like this. Upgrade the last triangle, then build two wall frames. If you connect the multi TC to the gatehouse first, you won't be able to build the wide gap later. Finish connecting, place a sequence of floor frames like so. Now everything is connected to the external TC, apart from the wide gap. To do this, first remove all the twig. Build wall frames on the foundations and then remove the foundations. The frames will still stay in place. To finish the wide gap foundations, build a square either side of the triangle. Here's a great trick for placing the compound walls neatly. First place two foundations, then two large boxes. Line the compound wall up against the boxes, making sure it's centered. And there, no gaps. To put two barricades on top of the gatehouse, put twig floors on the sides like this. Now we can fortify the base. First, place door frames on three sections of the base. Then build walls like so. Don't worry about the gaps, we can fill those later. Build walls either side of these triangles to leave room for the jump ups.
add an extra layer to the base. Now, seal with doors. Placing a wall here will seal the gap. Build wall frames like this to cover up any other gaps. Three of the chutes go from the ground floor to the peaks. The other three go from the peaks to the open core. Place wall frames on the ones that lead to the peaks and seal the ones that lead to the open core. Now, finish the third floor. Place walls all around, leaving gaps for entrances to the inner peaks. Now we build the defendable entrance to the open core. Now we're going to seal in the honeycomb and finish the inner peaks. These triangles here don't need to be metal. Stone is okay for now. Place triangle frames and other hatches on these chutes. Now we can finish the inner peaks. To seal them off completely, we place siren lights in the gaps to stop anyone from jumping down. For the ladder hatch chutes, seal them in with walls and garage doors. these chutes, remember, don't seal the top, instead place a half wall as a jump up. Build walls all around to seal the peaks. Place only one wall frame here, like this. If you place two either side, then the bunker won't work. To seal, place triangles like this, paying close attention to their placement. Then, attach square frames to the core.
square floors connect to the outer walls. Complete with triangles placed in this exact location. Again, you can save on metal by leaving these triangles stone. Seal the jump ups to the open core with walls and ladder hatches. I place this wall the wrong way. It should be soft side facing you. If you haven't done so already, fortify the entrances with extra garage doors and walls. Place furnaces as a jump up and then seal the chute with the garage door. Place walls like this to complete the inner honeycomb. Extend the outside layer of honeycomb by two floors. Then add new entrances. This wall frame should be metal to reinforce the shooting floor. Build another three like this, then go on to extend the rest of the honeycomb. This wall does not need to be metal, but it does disguise the gap quite nicely. Now from this floor, you can safely extend the honeycomb. When the inner honeycomb is done, extend the outer walls by two floors. Again, this middle wall doesn't need to be metal if you're on a strict budget. Now add another layer to the inner honeycomb. Before sealing in the open core, there were three unlootable loot rooms like so. First place a half wall and a triangle with a shelf. Remove the half wall and extend the shelf. Place walls either side. If done correctly, you should be able to place this wall here. 
But before you do that, place all your boxes. Remember to lock the bottom ones and get your team to input the code before you seal them in. If you prefer, you can place a wallframe and a garage door here instead. To seal, build a frame attaching to the inner wall, not the outer wall. Then a square floor attaching to the outer wall. Finish the loop with the triangles, taking note of the location to cover any gaps. Either side of each loop room, build wall frames like this. Between them, build full walls. Now all around, build window frames. Around the center of the open core, build wall frames. Then, attach square ceilings to each one. Now, seal everywhere with triangles. Finish the bunkers by placing walls and ceilings. Don't worry about any gaps for now. We'll fix them later. Place triangles around like this, leaving a gap or a jump down into the open core. Then build a layer of walls all around. Before sealing the chutes with garage doors, place half height jump ups like so. The jump ups can be stone. Finally, attach frames to the outer walls. These can be stone too. Then square ceilings to the inner window frames. Build triangle floors all around, connecting at the correct position, as you can see. Place wall frames with garage doors in all the gaps. Then add window embrasures all around. Now extend the chutes leading onto the top floor. The wall frames don't need to be metal.
before adding a pancake layer to this floor. Build low walls all around to prevent splash damage. Then, build full walls in the middle. Before ceiling, add more low walls in the centre. Finish the outer core first with triangles and squares. Seal the inner core with triangles. During editing, I realised that all these low walls don't really need to be metal. Stone is probably good enough. Now we can extend the honeycomb by another layer. Are you still here? If so, leave a comment. It helps with the algorithm. And thanks for sticking around. Sorry for the lengthy video, but for a base this size, I feel it's necessary to make sure everything is shown clearly. If you've learned anything new here, remember to like the video. And if you haven't already, consider subscribing. This video took an obscene amount of time to make, and your support really motivates me to continue to make better videos. Now, on with the build. After you've extended all the honeycomb, seal it in. Now, extend the wide gap shooting floor by two frames. Repeat this process another five times. For the ramp peaks, upgrade these foundations and then build wall frames to support it. Repeat this again all around the base. To extend the shooting floors further, you can build twig scaffolding to help you. Notice that in my videos, I don't fly around building the base, as I'd like to show you how to do it realistically. using scaffolding to make it easier. From the roof, extend the wide gap to its full height. To extend the ramp peaks, use twig triangles as shown. To complete the wide gap, upgrade these two triangles, then add the rest of the floors and the window frames. To finish the ramp peaks, add square floors like this, leaving the middle one twig. Make sure this triangle attaches to the shooting floor, and not the base. Place your window frames all around.
it's important to add another warframe here for stability. Now add your ramps, one in the higher position, the other connecting at the lower position. Remember to destroy the twig before upgrading the ramps to metal, as it's tricky to do the other way. Now add some upper peaks. Place wall frames all around, with the hard side facing you. Add another pancake layer with low walls to separate each part. Then seal it with squares and triangles. Next we can make the bedrooms. Add walls all around like so. Add a garage door and then seal in the roof. If you want, you can add lockers here, but I prefer two large boxes. After placing the bed, put down two wall frames and doors. Now to build the roof exits, put down two walls as shown the wall frame and the stairs. Place stairs facing this way to act as a jump up and give you extra cover when peeking. You can also store loot underneath. To finish the exit, place a full wall here and here, and then a window frame on this side. Lastly, add the door and then a roof. Now, add extra roof peaks here placing two walls and then half walls on top of them. Then place a floor frame. Jump up here using your magical powers. Build two low walls here to act as cover. Add a roof so you can sneak up quietly. Then seal it in. Place stone wall frames in every conceivable slot to help with stability. Now add doors and garage doors. I think I got a bit carried away with the garage doors. In most of the slots, sheet doors will do. Before sealing in the roof, attach floor frames to the inner core. Then, attach metal floors to the outer ring. Build floor triangles in these locations as shown. The placement is fairly trial and error. Remember to check for gaps as you go. This is due to the irregular multi-TC technique we used at the start to create this footprint. Note that some of these triangles don't need to be metal. Stone is strong enough. Now, place wall frames in every possible slot around the shooting floor. This will help with stability.
Now, sealing the roof to the shooting floor. Now that the roof is sealed, we can build bedrooms and towers for the windmills. We'll make six of these all together. Place beds inside and then a drop box to keep spare kits. Before sealing in the roof, extend the wall frames by one more floor. Laddering up to the top, we can now place a ceiling and our windmill. Now that the towers are complete, we can finish the top of the base by building roofs around the ramp peaks. Then, extend the wide gap with window frames. Build housings for the roof turrets as shown. Using metal fences instead of prison cell gates will help protect the turrets even better. Place another turret in here to stop anyone from camping the roof peak up. Now to build turrets in the compound. Build housings like so to stop anyone from entering a breach. Build another six more like this. When you can afford it, build extra turrets here, protected by metal fences. There's room for another six turrets protecting the core. Again, seal them in with metal fences. Now to finish the bunkers. First, upgrade the surrounding parts to HQM. To cover this gap, upgrade the wall frame and rotate it. Rotating this wall will enable the conditional model. If you're worried about soft siding, I very much doubt that's going to happen in a base this size. You can also place a rug to disguise the backwards wall, as you can see in my tour. After opening the bunker, we can now upgrade these parts and place our deployables. A large battery can be placed at the back. Then, place the salvage shelves. You won't be able to do it with the bunker open, so close the bunker, then place the shelves. When you're done, hopefully your kind teammates will let you out. Then, place four large boxes, like so. After that, we can then squeeze in a vending machine. When the bunker is open again, place one more large box here. Now for some more upgrades. Make the roof HQM. This will increase the top-down raid cost into the center of the open core to 30 rockets. Upgrade all these outer parts so raiders can't identify where the bunkers are. Inside, you can also upgrade this part if you like. Add garage doors here to seal off the entrances. 
Place floor tiles in these positions and then place your turrets. Place shotgun traps behind the embrasures so raiders can't gain control of your shooting floor. Congratulations, you made it all the way to the end. I hope you enjoyed our journey together in building this disgustingly big base. As always, like, comment and subscribe and join my discord for personal building help. Cheers.